Good morning. Welcome to Bethesda Church, the third Sunday in Advent. It's good to see everyone. Let us pray. O God, who see now your people faithfully awaiting the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who reigns and lives. You are in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. to 
Do a little dance routine up here this morning. Me and Joe. Joe is leading. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day it is outside. What a beautiful day the Lord hath made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Today's scripture is Isaiah 35. And I'll be reading 1 through verse 10. And it's about the Lord's people will have joy. The desert and the dry land will be glad, and the wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like a lily, the land will blossom. It will rejoice and sing with joy. It will have the glory of Lebanon, the majesty of Carmel and Shannon. Everyone will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strength in limp hands, steady weak knees. Tell those who are terrified, be brave. Don't be afraid. Your God will come with vengeance, with divine revenge. He will come and rescue you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unplugged. Then those who are lame will leap like deer, and those who cannot speak will shout for joy. Water will gush out into the desert, and the streams will gush out into the wilderness. Then the hot sand will become a pool, and dry ground will have springs. Grass will become cattails and rushes into homes of jackals. A highway will be there, a roadway. It will be called Holy Road. Sinners won't travel on it. It will be those, it will be for those who walk on it. Godless fools won't wander onto it. Lions won't be there. Wild animals won't go on it. They won't be found there. But the people reclaimed by the Lord will walk on it. The people ransomed by the Lord will return. They will come to Zion singing with great joy. Everlasting happiness will be on their heads as a crown. They will be glad and joyful. They will have no sorrow or grief. What beautiful promises the Lord has made to us. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus lay down his Yeah. 
Do we have any unspoken requests by a show of hands? I see most all of us do. So let us go now to the foot of the cross and let us take a moment of silence and let us pray for ourselves during that time. Oh, Lord, as we come to you this morning, we give you thanks and praise for all your blessings. We thank you, O Lord, for this day that you have given to us and this place in which we can come, a place of refuge, a sanctuary where we can come, a place where we know that your spirit is present and with us, a place where other believers gather together, a place where we lift up our song, our our voices in song and praise, a place where we hear your word spoken and a place where we can come and pray unto you, our God, who cares for us and loves us, who hears our prayers. Lord, we give you so so many thanks for all the things that you do for us. You protect us from things that we're not even aware, and you bless us more than we ever deserve. But Lord, we also want to lift up to you this morning those special requests that were made this morning by by individuals. Lord, you know each and every one's special needs. And Lord, we pray for those. We pray for those that raise their hands that have special concerns. Lord, we are a people who are human, who who have needs. And Lord, we are very vulnerable to those things. But Lord, as we spend these next few minutes here together, we pray that we will put aside the distractions from life, that we will concentrate upon your Son, Jesus Christ, and we will worship Him in truth and in spirit. Lord, may all the songs that we sing and the the words we hear lift us up and draw us closer to you. Lord, we also want to pray for our men and women in uniform, both here at home and abroad. We pray for our first responders, our police, firemen and medics. We pray for our president and all of his aides and all the politicians that make so many laws and decisions that affect our lives. And, oh, Lord, we also pray for those who have rejected the church, those who are lost and do not know you. Lord, we pray for Bethesda United Methodist Church. We pray, oh, Lord, that we will be a light to the world around us, that we might reflect Christ and show his love. Lord, may our lives truly be what you would have us to be. May we walk the road that Isaiah spoke of. Lord, may we find that oasis in the desert. We thank you, O Lord, for all the things that you do for us. And now may all of God's people pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Thank you, Van. Appreciate that. How many of you brought your Bibles today? Let's see. Hold them high. Amen. Thank you for bringing your Bibles. This morning I brought the message. 
from Eugene Peterson. So I'll be reading our gospel from that translation. So uh, if you have a different translation, you may want to just listen instead of trying to read along because it is quite different. But I'm reading Matthew 11, 2 through 10. We're talking about John the Baptist here. John, meanwhile, had been locked up in prison. When he got wind of what Jesus was doing, he sent his own disciples to ask, Are you the one we've been expecting, or are we still waiting? Jesus told them, Go back and tell John what's going on. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the wretched of the earth learn that God is on their side. Is this what you were expecting? Then count yourselves most blessed. When John's disciples left to report, Jesus started talking to the crowd. He started talking to them about John. He asked them, What did you expect when you went out to see him in the wild? A weekend camper? Not hardly. What then? A sheik in silk pajamas? Not in the wilderness, not by a long shot. What then? A prophet? That's right, a prophet. Probably the best prophet you'll ever hear. He is the prophet that Malachi announced when he wrote, I'm sending my prophet ahead of you to make the road smooth. May God bless the reading and the hearing of His holy word. So today... The third Sunday of Advent, a Sunday when we write, light the, the pink candle, which represents joy. So as we look at the Advent candle in the past several Sundays, we have focused on peace, on hope, and today on joy. But where is the joy? We would be expecting to hear Bible passage on Jesus, on the baby Jesus being born in a manger, or on Joseph and Mary, or at least some shepherds biding by their fields. But no, we we hear a story about John the Baptist, who's in prison. And of all things, he seems to have doubts as to who Jesus is. Last week, we talked about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness and he was bold and full of fire and brimstone and preaching, repent, turn for your sins, seek God, the kingdom of heaven is near. He was bold. He even went on to say that, look, behold, the Lamb of God, one who I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. He's talking about Jesus. He's got all this spiritual empowerment and boldness. And then just a few short weeks later, John gets locked up, thrown in prison, and now he's starting to wonder about who Jesus really is. He even sent his disciples, go find out what Jesus is doing. Ask him, is he the one that we've been looking for? Or do we need to keep looking? Have you ever asked yourself the same question? Have you ever had doubts about Jesus Christ? Have you ever had doubts about your own destiny? About your own salvation? Sure we have. Sure we have. Last week I preached on dream big. And we should dream big. But we can't dream big and still not have some reality to life. Because there are times... When hard times come, difficult times are going to be in front of us. Do you know that during the holiday season that more people seek pastors and counselors, physicians, psychiatrists, psychologists, and other types of mental health than any other time of the year? Why is that? It's because they see what's going on around them, and they have this great anticipation of what Christmas ought to be like. 
It ought to be this perfect, picturesque scene in their lives. And it doesn't happen. And so they become depressed. Suicide rates go sky high during the holiday season because people can't cope. But yet, here we are, third Sunday of Advent, and we celebrate joy. Well, where is the Christmas joy? We see it as we go out shopping. We hear the Christmas music and we see the Christmas lights and the decorations. And we see it, but yet for some reason we don't have that fulfillment of joy in our own lives. What's happening? It's humanity. Just like John the Baptist who gets thrown in jail, gets a taste of reality, knowing that he's facing death, he begins to doubt Christ. And when Jesus sends an answer by His disciples, He says, Go tell John what you see. That the blind are able to see. That the deaf can hear. That the lepers are being cleansed. That the mute are singing praises. We hear those words and they sound so familiar from what Carl read in Isaiah. Jesus is basically telling John's disciples what Isaiah promised thousands of years before. That God is always there. That when it seems that the road is so difficult, so barren, so dry. You see, Israel was facing a very difficult time in the days of Isaiah. Israel had been devastated by Assyria. And then later, In 586, the Babylonians came and they totally annihilated Jerusalem and the southern kingdom of Judah. There was nothing left. But Isaiah wrote this passage and he began to tell God's people that there was still hope. That God was going to save them. God was going to redeem them. That there was a road for them to travel. And so that's my message today. There is a road for us to travel even when all things seem bleak. When things seem to be so Difficult in life. We seem to lose our Christmas joy so many times. It reminds me sometimes of people who come into church and and they they begin to interact with the church. They're new members and they they get baptized and and they profess their, their faith. And they're on fire for the Lord. They're really enthused over what's going on in their life. And then they attend a council meeting. (laughs) Reality begins to hit home. They hear what's going on and they say, I can't believe that that person talked like that. I can't believe that they said those things. And so the joy is sucked right out of them. But that's the reality of life. So many times we do let the things of this world get in the way of our joy. But Jesus told the disciples of John, look what I'm doing. You know, on Sunday mornings, just like this morning, every Sunday morning I ask my congregations, I say, is there anything you want to share in what God is doing in your life? And I get a few responses every now and then, but it seems that people want to share the miraculous, the extraordinary the spectacular things that God is doing. God doesn't work that way. Not normally. You see, John was sitting there in prison and he was expecting Jesus to be the new Savior. He was expecting Him to overthrow the Romans, to bust Him out of jail, and to take over the world. That's what John the Baptist was anticipating. We have that same expectation. We pray to God. We want God to take away all of our pain, all of our problems. We think if we just pray hard enough, God will take care of it. Maybe I need to be better. I need to pray harder. I need to go to church more. We have the same expectations that John had. But God is still working in our lives. He is working just like He told the disciples. Look at what's happening. The blind are able to see. The lame are being able to walk. Things are happening all around us. 
Why do we not see what God is doing in our lives? It's because we're looking for something else. We're looking for the miraculous and the, the, uh, the fabulous to take place. We're looking for Him to bust us out of jail. And that's not the way God works. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? There's a story about a guy. His name was uh, George Mason. And George Mason was a banker. And George was working one afternoon. Everyone else had already left the office and he was catching up on some final paperwork and he had to walk back into the vault. And as he walked into the vault and was putting up some paperwork, all of a sudden it got real dark and he heard the door close. And he realized he was trapped. George Mason realized that he might be there all night because everyone had left. George had no family at home. He only had one brother. And then George realized that it was Christmas Eve. He may end up spending all day Christmas and Christmas night in that vault. And he began to panic. He began to worry about, would he have enough air to breathe? And he began to look around in the darkness and he saw just a little beam of light in one corner. And he ran over there to that corner and he, he could feel some fresh air coming in. So he realized that he would have enough air to last for a period of time. But he resolved himself in knowing that he was going to be there for at least 36 to 40 hours because nobody was going to come looking for George Mason. You see, George had uh, had an invitation from his brother to come and spend Christmas Day. But George turned it down because his brother had kids and he didn't particularly like kids and he didn't want to have to buy him Christmas gifts, so he just decided that he would turn it down. He had a co-worker to invite him to a movie that night. But he said no because George just wanted to be alone. Well, he certainly got his wish because George spent all that night all day Christmas and all of Christmas night in that vault by himself. The next morning, when someone finally came, an employee opened up the vault and opened up the door, and they didn't even see George. They went on back to their, to their desk. And George come walking out, and no one paid him any attention. He went to his desk, and he got his car keys, and he left. He went home, and he took a shower and shaved and put on his clean clothes and came back to work. And nobody said anything to George. Nobody had realized that George had been locked in a vault for over 36 hours. Nobody realized even that George come in late that morning. But George made out a little sign, and he put it in the vault. And the little sign just simply said, Joy of Christmas. You see, George began to think about his life. He began to think about how lonely he was. How it seemed that no one cared. So George began to show other people attention. He began to buy gifts for other people. He began to do the things that would make Christ happy in his life. And it fulfilled George. George found the joy of Christmas. He found the joy of being a Christian. So this morning... As we look at the teaching of Jesus, I told John's disciples to look around, see what's going on. I ask you, what are you looking for? What are you looking for this Christmas season? Are you looking for the joy of Christ to be in your life? Don't let the problems the things that seem to get in the way of our happiness and our joy, don't let them overshadow the joy of Christ during this season. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we come to you once again today. We give you thanks and praise for all of your blessings. Lord, we thank you for the hopes and promises that Isaiah gave us in his word, knowing that you are a God who loves us and cares for us, a God who makes a way for us to be redeemed through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, we thank you for people like John the Baptist 
who we know, O oh Lord, that is only human. Even the greatest prophet to ever live has his doubts. Lord, help us in our doubts. Help us in our fears. But Lord, help us to see the things that you are doing in and around our lives. And Lord, as we see these things, as we look for you in our lives, Lord, may we receive the joy, the hope, the peace, and the love that you promised to us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I'm going to invite the band to come again and play our benediction for us. Let us go forth in this place. Let us constantly be looking for Christ at work in our lives. May He fill us with joy, hope, peace, and love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.